today I got lucky enough to get press passes to a convention named Free Play Florida. Press passes! <laughs> These Unite. are the bracelets we got. We're the press. Just the news. So the tickets are normally $25 a day, and if you get them, then you can play like hundreds of old arcade machines and some new. And I want to get right into this, so let's go. Just amazing. Let's go explore further. Mindstorm? Is that what it says on there? my kid anymore. Who, who am I? How is it? How's the gameplay? Is it fun? Is it interesting? Or? It's interesting. It was like the game that I played like earlier because it's a little easier. It's definitely cool looking. It is. Look at this museum they have with games that are almost a hundred years old. Wow. Tip tops from 1933. Oh, there we go. Something. 
That game is from 1934, so be very careful with it and go. These old kind of pinballs? Yeah. Now let's go do our press tour. This is the biggest show floor we've ever had. Last year we had 18,000 square feet. The entire show is 26,000 square feet this year, so it's much, 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 much bigger. The groups we've been working with this year, Rebel Preprints, uh, they are a local business, and they have uh, Echo Base. Uh, they, they, these stickers are free, correct? Yes. So if you guys want any of the stickers, feel free to grab them. They do these really cool nerd designs, so like Ninja Turtles, and they put their logo, and they did all the stickers we're selling this year. Uh, they are an awesome local business that we look to support. Uh, and if you get a chance, the store is the most awesome store. It's a very small store, but it's got all sorts of old Ninja Turtles and like the stuff you see here, and just graffiti based on all the things we love about the 80s. Right? Yeah. Can I miss anything else? Yeah. Okay. They also helped us uh, produce a lot of when we're doing the machines. They, they produced some artwork for some of the machines that we used to decorate when we did our custom tabs. Which is awesome. So Scott yes. Dayton. Oh, good idea. Okay. Scott Dayton still makes Atari cartridges today. So for the original Atari 2600. So this is this is a brand new Atari game uh, for your original 1977 Atari 2600 uh, Cuber Jump. And his group, Neo Games, will still develop original Atari 2600 games. And this is kind of one of those things a lot of people don't realize. You can still get, oh yeah, so here's two more of these times. Uh, this one you can get up from uh, Neo Games. They also sell it online at atariage.com. Um, and uh, this is a special limited edition Fat Albert that Scott's selling here at the show. And I think, Scott, you, yeah, you only have this one at the show, right? Uh, yeah, so limited edition Atari 2600 game. So super cool if you're into retro gaming. Learning so much. Huh? We're yeah. slowly meander through the people here. We expect a huge jump on numbers this year. Uh, it's actually going to be kind of crazy tomorrow. I'm expecting a humongous crowd. We're going to walk this bigger. All right, this is Ken from Nagaku Overdrive. He does a lot of cool concerts. He has a concert coming up. Can you describe just a little bit about what you do? Yeah, we do shows throughout the year that feature video game bands, chip tunes, nerd more and more. And the show we got coming up next week, it will be Power Wisp and Courage. We'll be celebrating the 20th anniversary of Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and the Zelda franchise in general. We'll have video game setups, live music, live Zelda music specifically, head by, headlined by Big Brigade. We'll have artists, vendors, uh, drink specials, clean Zelda drinks, costume contests, game tournaments, and more. It's going to be at the Abbey in Orlando, Florida, right by Lake Eola. You can go to ongodcomeoverdrive.com to find out more about the show and get your tickets. That was good. You rehearsed that. No, I've just done it so many times, <laughs> you know. We're entering the area we kind of call Game Central Station now, which for those of you who remember the movie film Wreck-It Ralph, Game Central Station was a spot in Wreck-It Ralph where all the games kind of met in the... I guess it was like a surge protector. Yeah. I, I'm guessing. Okay. Yeah. So, we made yeah. the boys set up some of the games they thought fit more the family friendly. And they uh, put their little scoreboards on, just like in the movie had these different locations that they'd go to different games. That's what they set up. One thing that was really cool about this year is that Disney contacted us and asked if they could come out on Saturday. So, tomorrow, Disney's going to be out here. I'm showcasing Wreck-It Ralph 2, uh, and they're going to do a 20-minute uh, video, a preview of the film. So we're going to see 20 minutes of the film. So that was super cool, and they contacted us, and that was awesome because when Disney notices you, they feel kind of like you're on the radar. Uh, so we're going to walk through here, and we're going to see one of the things that I actually adore the most is, and I want to take it home, but there's no way I can. This is kind of our recreation of the uh, scene from Stranger Things. 
season two. One of our gentlemen made the giant arcade sign from Stranger Things, and they tried to locate games. They actually hunted down a lot of the games that were in that scene from Stranger Things 2, where the kids are playing at the arcade. I love the sign. I want to take it home, but again, I have no place to put that thing. But it's super cool, and it, I believe, I'm told, I haven't stood in one place long enough to see it, but I'm told that if you hang around long enough, this will change into upside down mode. It'll turn into like blue and start flickering colors. I don't know if it's on that mode now, but it's supposed to do that at some points in time. So people who team up with us are crazy. Behind you is our 10 foot tall Tron cabinet that was built by a major space in Tampa. It is tremendously heavy and tremendously amazing. I love it. I almost love it as much as the one behind me, which is our 10 foot tall Donkey Kong. As I understand it, it is the largest Donkey Kong in existence. Um, and for a guy my size, that makes me feel like a kid again, because I'm literally at that, that size that I really, really like. I'm gonna take you through this way. We're gonna see a lot of, you're gonna notice a lot of oddball machines. And that's because this corner around here has a lot of oddball machines. One of my favorites, and if nothing else, if you get a chance to play any game, please take the time to play Star Trigon. It's this awesome game where all you do is fly around planets, creating shapes, creating, linking the planets up. Everything's done with just one button. It's super, super cool. I believe, if I remember right, it's connected to the Mr. Driller series, which Mr. Driller, if you don't know, is the son of the main character from Dig Dug. So there's a big connection to us old school gamers. It all comes back around. Yeah, that's Mr. Driller right there. And next we're gonna go through in the alley. So these again, these are people who we've given a spot to, we've given a table to just so they can show off their games because much like us, this is a project of passion. Their games that they're developing right here in Central Florida are projects of passion. These guys have to love what they're doing because they put countless hours to try to develop these games. One of the games we really show, like showcasing this year is Wiffle Blasters. It's literally a multiplayer game where people just get really angry at each other throwing wiffle balls at each other. That's literally it, right? Well, that's the most part. Uh, it's cool to see people getting angry at each other in the same room, which is what family <laughs> and friends are all about. Highlight Heroes. We really did our best to curate a huge collection of pinball machines this year meant that a lot of us, not myself because that's a lot of work, but a lot of people went around trying to grab pinball machines because the pinball scene has really exploded locally and really around the country. So they've done an awesome job this year. So this is Circus Maxman.
well, second thing. First he said, you know, how'd you like the film? And then he's like, I'm really sorry, but the order came in about three weeks ago, and we had to cut like 20 minutes out of the movie, and you ended up on the cut. That, that, <laughs> that's heartbreaking, because that was his Stan Lee moment. That was your Stan Lee moment. Well, now, Stan Lee moment, I wrote to Stan Lee and told him that they were making a movie out of my game, and since I since I had no experience with this stuff, I was hoping if they wanted to do a cameo of me, Stan Lee would play me. <laughs> but Stan Lee never answered me, so I don't know. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Thank and you. have fun in Free Play Florida. This is year number four, right? Huh? Is this year number four? Three, I think. I think it's four, sir. I'm old. I have no memory. During the last five years, Brian is a glutton for punishment. He comes back every year. My sign just gets bigger uh, yeah. every time. <laughs> Gentlemen right there, that's Triforce. He's a gamer, look him up, he's very cool. Yes. We're gonna finagle through here. A lot of really new pinball machines here, a lot of amazing pinball machines. If you, if you haven't had a chance to get on some of these ones, the Pirates of the Caribbean is flipping amazing in the technology. It's got two pinball boards on there. It's got a pinball board, and if you get the pinball on the ship, it's another little pinball game in it. It's crazy. It was showcased at Free Play Florida. We were one of the first places to get it last year, and I just think it's the coolest game in the world. Deadpool Pinball, which is super new as well, literally just came out a few months ago, uh, is an awesome game. A lot of these guys, they do multiple versions of the game. Pinball machines are expensive, but some people want the premium version, so they're willing to spend the money. He's the Amateur slash Nathan Barnett. If you don't know him, just look up a YouTube video and explain everything. That's his body pillow. It has two sides. Hey, this young girl. Yeah, that's the body <laughs> side. He's the retro game whiz. He loves Neo Geo. He loves Virtual Boy, because everybody loves Virtual Boy. Um, and he's just a really stellar guy. And he'll be around later, so you can see him. I feel I'm like we're like learning. Video like learning a lot. Yeah. So, oh, hi, everybody. Uh, so this is something I'm super, super excited about. This is the new, the brand new Ninja Turtle cab that's coming out. We literally had to sign over like our lives to get this. It, 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 we can't. It has to be come back in the same condition that it showed up here. If you were a gamer at the same time that I was a gamer, then the Ninja Turtles arcade games were like the best. And as cool as Ninja Turtles was, Turtles in Time I think was even better. Is that fair? So for the younger generation, this is their version of the Turtles. And again, they're back in a beat em up game, which is super, super exciting. My friend Patrick Riley and George Lowe. Hello. Welcome to our country. Thank you. Welcome. Well, welcome. Oh, space welcome. Ghost. Japanese press. Welcome. Konnichiwa. And I, at this point, once I introduce him, we kind of just let him go. He used to be three feet tall. Thanks to Space Ghost's man vitamins. There you go, girls. He's all meat now. Uh, make sure. What's going on over here? Thank you, George. Oh, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Feel free to stop by the gift shop. <laughs> Lovely you. items. Hanukkah's on the way. <laughs> I have to show this off. It's something that's been forgotten. I played this game for the first time in a, uh, in, I think in a AMC theater before I went to go see a movie. I can't stress this enough. The game's not good, but at the time it was mind blowing. So it's all like holographic actors. You, can't, you just have to see, I don't even know if that's going to show up on camera, it's a weird game. It's a very strange game. So I had to show it up. These are our wonderful press people. Okay. And this is the most amazing machine. This is Roxy Kong, for those of you Star Wars fans. Um, well, first of all, Roxy's, Roxy the Rancor, you can see Roxy's head right over here. Roxy does have the rest of her body in this machine. It's a 14 foot tall Rancor that we set up at conventions. And for fun, we made a special version of the game using Roxy and Luke and Ula. And it's, it's a playable game. It has a special cabinet built for it. And we use it to raise money for charity. People donate money. And we have, with both with Roxy and the game, we've raised thousands and thousands of dollars around the country uh, for children's charity. It's wonderful. But you can play. You can see. 
play just like normal games. <laughs> and uh, you go, you gotta say Ula. There, you know, Ula. And F, you can see up here where the actress who played Ula has a, a in Kentucky got to play the game and she autographed the cabinet for us. That's awesome. So I'm gonna take you to the rarest machine you're probably gonna see today. Well, at least one of Well, it might be the rarest because there's only two of them in the country. It's also still in Saran Wrap. This is Marble Man. Marble Man is the sequel to Marble Madness, and this is never really produced. This is there was just a prototype. Has anyone played Marble Madness before? Oh yeah. It's literally madness. <laughs> it's literally something that will drive you mad. So this is the sequel to Marble Madness that was never really mass produced. So there's two of these in the country, one on the West Coast, this is the only one on the East Coast, and it's the only one that's set up for three players. So we're gonna have this out this weekend. It's a super, super, super cool thing. It's not up right now. I, I'm imagining that someone has something special to do with it, but it's a very, very cool thing that's coming out this weekend. Um, so I just think it's cool. Artist Alley, we have curated what is the finest artist in Orlando and brought them into one spot. This is my friend. This is Robo Ono, 10. And this is the art of Pump, Humphrey. Um, you can check out the art I'm going through. My friend Bear Biggers is not here right now, but he has tremendous stuff. And Mercury Toy Box over here. Kimmy's Craft. Um, Robo over here is the gentleman who made this design. So he is the artist that created this this year. Uh, his work is tremendously awesome, and you can see he loves flamingos, and I should point out that his main flamingo you see up there, his main flamingo is which is a reference to, anyone guess? Ready Player One. Ready Player One. What about you guys, what you do? Yeah, um, I got this booth here is um, all the pre-war pinballs, and pre-war is actually, you know, from 1931 up until about 1941. Uh, in 1931, they, they, they just all purely mechanical machines. And then after that, they started doing some dry cell batteries. And then in the late 30s is when they came out with the electricity. So all, all these games here, I got them all set on free play. You can all you know, try them at your, at your leisure. How you doing? We're Black Mansion Studios. We're showcasing not only Don't Bleed, but Chi Busters as well as our uh, game tune, which is our new RPG that we have on Steam. Tetris one for you guys too. Whoa! It's based on the Nintendo yes. arcade model. And it's for anybody who likes the Nintendo version of the Tetris. This is so cool. Really cool. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's cool. So I just want to thank all of you guys for guys, guys for coming out tonight. I hope I was informative. I know I probably gave you like just a fraction of what's gonna be going on this weekend. I encourage you here around tonight. Uh, at 10 o'clock tonight, we're going to be doing Chill Screen with Nathan Barnett, where uh, he's going to jump in an ice bath, bath and compete in Sonic Mania against Tom Van. And Tom Van, if you don't know, he's part of the Tom and Dan Show, um, and that's a very popular local radio show, and they're going to compete. And then after that, at um, 11, is our pajama party, um, where if you wear pajamas, you can have an extra hour inside the arcade. And then finally, anybody who wants to hear ghost stories, our good friend Nathan Barnett from midnight to two in the morning is going to tell ghost stories. We have blueberry uh, cereal that we're gonna eat. And uh, yeah, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's what we're doing today. So, uh, and then awesome stuff throughout the whole weekend. I thank everybody for coming out to the tour. I thank Rob for coming along. Not a problem. I appreciate it. Uh, everybody enjoy the rest thank of the day. You. Thank, you. thank you. Appreciate it. I'll do an air clap. Air clap. Yeah, high five. <laughs> Free Play Florida is so cool. If you're in Orlando, you should definitely check it out.
I think my favorite game in there was Rampage. And I got to meet the actual inventor of the game. So that made it extra cool. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more footage like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to go play some more games now. This looks really weird. Sega! Is Bulkhorn, a renegade scientist who has forbidden experiments.